Ciao ragazzi, we are over here in Bella Italia. We are in the port city of Civitavecchia, which is about 50 minutes outside of Rome. We are getting ready to embark on a nine day Mediterranean cruise on the Norwegian Escape. We're gonna take you guys with us, show you everything we do in each port, and talk about pre-cruising, post-cruising, port transfers, everything in between. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and now let's get cruising. So when you arrive in Rome, you do have to take either a train, bus, or private transportation in order to get to the city of Civitavecchia. Now, if you are coming a day or two ahead of time, there are a few hotels here, but there's also some Airbnbs. In order to get into the port area, you do need to take a bus. Now that is free of cost. And then you can arrive at the terminal and get onto the ship. Now for our first day on the ship, after we did our check-in for our fire drill, we decided that we were going to go to Oshi Hands. The buffet is open and you were able to go, but this was so much less crowded that we were just like, this is the move right here. We did walk around the ship a little bit because we've been on here quite a few times. So we wanted to see if anything had been updated or changed. And it was really nice to see that they're really maintaining it well. We did check out some of the wings, some of the nachos. I also had this awesome Cuban dish. Dish. the kids had some pasta and then we walked up to the buffet just to see what else they had there the staff was super friendly as always there's always some room for dessert and of course just to take a peek at the buffet just in case you know we needed an extra little snack there I will say they have done a really great job maintaining all of the food quality on this ship we were really surprised with the fact that there was some great fresh prosciutto when we got on board all of the pastries were really good and of course the ice cream machine was plentiful and i love that they added such a wide variety of food this time we did notice that they had an indian station an asian station and i will say i think there was a lot more dishes than the last time we were here so that part was great they also have kid friendly food we did see some mac and cheese and some nachos and some hot dogs grilled chicken so if you're not super food adventurous don't worry because there is definitely plenty for you to eat over at the buffet. So for this particular sailing, we did decide to do a mini sweet quad. We do have two grown teenagers and you would think that like it's not enough space, but honestly, we were totally fine because this itinerary is super intense. We were in a different port every day and we really didn't spend that much time in the room. The room had everything that you would think. It had lots of storage. It had a TV, a refrigerator. It had bed stands as well and a safe. There was also hangers in there and they have the little bags for when you want your laundry done. The robes were a nice touch as well. The bathroom had a double sink, which we really liked. And the one thing that was awesome was that jetted shower. We all really enjoyed that. For the very first port, we were in the city of Napoli. So Napoli has so much to offer. You have the beautiful Amalfi Coast, you have Capri, Sorrento, Pompeii, and you have downtown Napoli, which you do have to be a little bit careful of. There are some pickpockets and whatnot, but it has a great culinary scene. So we decided to go to Capri. We love Capri, we have been there before, and the beautiful thing about this port is that literally the second you disembark, you go through the tunnel, you just make a left, and it is a five minute walk max from your cruise ship to the ferries. We did purchase our tickets ahead of time. The thing that you need to make sure of is even if you did purchase your tickets ahead of time through the app, you have to go to the desk to collect your ticket. Some of the ferry lines do not do virtual tickets. You have to make sure you read all of the details and see if you need to retrieve your tickets before you stand in line. Now, Capri is a touristy town. It is going to be very crowded, but it is absolutely worth seeing. When you take the ferry to Capri, it's about 50 minutes. Now, when you get off in Capri, there's two options. Your first option is going to be to take the funiculare up to Capri Centro, which is like the center of town, or to take the bus up to Ana Capri. When you're exiting the ferry, you're going to go immediately to your right so that you can pick up tickets for either the funiculare or the bus. Personally, I love the center portion 
of Capri. I love the Finiculare, but this time we did decide to check out Anna Capri. It's beautiful as well. Lots of winding roads, lots of shops. We actually saw a wedding while we were there and really great pastry. If you only have a certain amount of time in port, you need to really make sure that you're watching your clock, especially if you're doing a tour on your own like we were. You always need to figure in the time for the bus to get up to Anacapri, get back down to Anacapri. Sometimes the buses fill up. You need to make sure you pad your time in case you miss the first bus and you have to wait for a second. And you also have to keep in mind that sometimes the ferries run late because of water conditions. So we did get only about three or four hours in Capri, but at least it was totally worth it and we were able to see a lot. We had some great limoncello, some great pastries, and we had a really nice time walking around the town. Good morning. Good morning. Enjoy the fabulous <laughs> Cagliari. So in the port of Sardinia, we decided to take a walk around town. There's a girl that has a TikTok and her name is Kate in Sardinia. And I reached out to her and she gave us a whole itinerary and it was absolutely the perfect amount of time for our day there. So we checked out St. Remy's, we went up to the castle, we went all through those little windy streets. And then we found this cute little cafe and we had an amazing panino and we got to check out some Sardinian food. They have these little types of croquettes and they're filled with meat, potato, vegetarian style, whatever you're looking for. And it's kind of like baked into a crust, really awesome. And I highly recommend checking out a lot of the local food. We also went to the famous gelato place, Peter Pan over there. And I have to tell you, it was some of the best gelato that we have had throughout this entire trip. So when you disembark, there is a bus there that'll take you right into the city center. You're going to be in Cagliari, Sardinia. Now, if you decide to do the beach route, you do need to kind of prearrange some of those ahead of time because it is on a different part of the island. We went in and we checked out some of the local food. I absolutely loved this supermarket. They sell everything from all different kinds of Sardinian cheeses and breads and meats. And then we walked around town. When we were headed up to St. Remy, we saw this beautiful chapel that we decided to stop by. Everything there is open to the public and we were able to walk around and take some pictures before we headed up all of those stairs for St. Remy. Now, I will tell you, Sardinia is very steep. So we decided to start our day with the climb. Basically, we went to everything that was all the way up at the top so that the rest of our day was spent walking down. It is pretty hot there, especially during May and June, of course, July and August as well. But the views that you get from up top are just gorgeous. And I definitely recommend just popping your head in and out of a lot of the cathedrals and just a lot of the stores that you're going to see because it has such beautiful architecture. We got to see a lot of Sardinian food before we headed back to the ship. It is a beautiful city. So one of the things that I find super cool when I'm traveling anywhere is to check out their local cuisine. So this is Sardinian gnocchi. It's very different than any gnocchi you've probably seen. You have to check this out. So if you look really close, it's like little teeny, teeny, tiny gnocchi, but you can see right here by the size of my finger that these are like just smaller than even my finger now. That's how teeny tiny they are. All right, so one of the things that I love to see is all of the different types of pastas that exist over here in Sardinia, very different than other areas of Italy. So it's really, really cool. Here's some fregola, look how cute. Almost looks like um, a cina de pepe, loriguitas, loriguitas right here too. And then of course, the Sardinian gnocchetti. So we checked out the port of Palma Mallorca. Now this is a little island off the coast of Spain. We did a ton of walking yet again, but we did happen to get there on a Sunday. So a lot of things were closed when we went. However, we still went up, we checked out their new modern mall. We took a bus ride over to their palace and we were able to walk all of the grounds of the palace. And when you're pulling into port and you see this building, it looks like it's really far away, but it is walkable. But I do have to warn you, it is a lot of walking in each of these ports. So if you're not really up for the walk, then definitely make sure that you take a cab or take the bus system. The bus system was super reliable and it took you back really close to where the port is. So you only had about a five minute walk from where the bus dropped you off. 
off. Okay, so today we are in the beautiful port town of Palma, Mallorca, Spain. And this is a gorgeous place to walk around, check out some cathedrals, and definitely grab a little bite to eat. When we arrived at the Royal Palace of Almudaina, we walked the grounds all the way around and checked out everything on the outside. It was closed because it was a Sunday, but they have a stunning view of the water. And if you look closely at those white tents, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different vendors that are inside of there. They had everything from crafts to food to drinks, and it was really neat to see. The whole area up there is very beautiful. Again, it's not really covered, so it is pretty toasty up there. After this walk, we did decide to go back into town and grab something to eat. We stopped by a restaurant called Born 8, and I have to tell you, the food was great, but the ceviche was such a standout. I really recommend checking this place out. So our next stop was Ibiza. Now Ibiza is a party town and we were there during the day so we did miss a lot of that kind of action, but we were able to check out the little city streets and the town itself. Now when you're docking in Ibiza, there is no direct walkway or a path for you to get into town. You do have to take either a cab or a city boat. The city boat costs about six euros per person round trip and for us that was really well worth it. We did have to walk about 10 to 15 minutes from the ship to get to where the city boat is. And then once we were on the city boat, it was about a 10 minute ride in order to get to the city center. They also offer a city boat to get to their beaches, but we didn't have time for the beaches today. So we just went into the city itself. The city is filled with lots of cobblestone streets. You're going to see a huge fort and you're able to walk all the way up there, get some stunning photos. And there's really great little cafes. We stopped at one, had a little ice cream, had a little coffee and local beer. And it was just a perfect way to finish off our day. So our next stop in Spain was Barcelona. Now Barcelona is an extremely busy day. There is a lot to see in Barcelona. So you do kind of have to decide ahead of time which way you wanna go with this. If you wanna go over to the coast side or if you wanna kind of like stay in the city, see La Sagrada Familia, see Gaudi's works, there's a lot to do. And the thing you need to keep in mind with Barcelona is that there is a good amount of traffic. So for this particular day, we we decided to do a hop on hop off bus and that kind of worked out better for us even though we did hit a good amount of traffic and didn't get to see everything we were looking for we still were able to see a lot it costs about 33 euros per person and they have two lines the first line is your green line the second line is an orange line the green line kind of stays to the right of the city where the orange line stays to the left of the city so you still get to see a lot of attractions either way but for us it was really important for us to check out La Sagrada Familia and Gaudi, so we went with the green line. We went over to La Sagrada, we checked out everything from the outside. We didn't quite have enough time to tour the inside and see everything else that we were looking for, so we ended up getting back on the hop on, hop off. We stopped by a couple of the buildings that Gaudi had designed, then we also went to La Rambla, and then at that point it was time to get back on the ship. It is a super full day, so if you're looking for something where you don't have to walk all the time, this is is definitely going to be the right tour for you. We're pretty much about 15 days into our European trip, so we have done so much walking. It's like absolutely crazy. I think we're well over 40 miles at this point. So the hop on, hop off, it just worked out perfectly for us. So next up is Cannes, France. Now here's the thing, you do have to catch a tender, so I do highly recommend that you get up early and try to get off the ship as soon as possible. It's about a 15 minute walk to get into the city from the port. The only downside with like tendering into a port is the amount of time it takes to get back and forth on the tender. So you have to kind of factor all of those things in when you're thinking about your time over in Cannes. So after getting off the tender, we walked around town. Now it is fair fairly flat, but you do have to be aware that there are some construction areas there. We checked out this patisserie, which it did look fabulous and some of the items were okay, but I'll be totally honest.
honest, it wasn't one of our favorite meals during this entire trip. We had a little bit of coffee and some snacks before we decided to head out to Rue Menadier. Now, I'm sorry if my pronunciation is not perfect in French there, but we checked out their farmer's market and then we decided to walk around the town a little bit more. It's a very clean area for sure and there was definitely some beautiful architecture there. We checked out the Path of the Stars and we were able to see a lot of the celebrity photos that had had movies there or came for the famous Cannes Film Festival. It was only about a five to 10 minute walk in order to get over to the famous theater where we were able to see the red carpet. It was very crowded and you can't get on it, but you are able to take pictures from a distance. We checked out some of the dessert shops and we checked out the local food scene for a little bit longer before we decided to head to the beach for the rest of the day. The beach is free and it was a beautiful beach, but you can't really take pictures there because it does allow topless sunbathing. Also, the toilets there are a 50 cent charge. So today we are in the port of Livorno and we took the train over to Florence, Firenze. It is absolutely beautiful over here. You have to just walk around, get a great Florentine steak, check out the beautiful Duomo. It is so worth the ride. Now, if you're wondering how we got here, let me tell you, it did take a little bit of effort. So when you're leaving the cruise port, you do have to get a cab. It's gonna be about 30 euro over to Livorno Centrale, which is the train station over in Livorno. Then you need to get tickets. They're about 10 euro each, each way, in order to get to Firenze. It is so worth the effort. Took about an hour and a half to two hours altogether, but I definitely recommend doing it. So over in Florence, after about a 20 to 30 minute wait in line, we were able to see the statue of David. We then decided to grab some lunch at a restaurant that was right around the corner called Osterio Giglio di Oro. Now this restaurant is known for their Tuscan steak, but they do have other dishes as well. The first thing that really stood out to us was the quality of the olive oil over here here everything was just so rich and tasty along with the pesto gnocchi and these beautiful eggs covered in tartufo or truffle they were cooked perfectly but this is what we were really here for we could not wait to taste the Tuscan steak. It was cooked perfectly. You do not ask for it to be cooked a certain way. They cook it rare and that's how it's always enjoyed over here. And it was so tender. We absolutely loved chowing down on that steak. Of course, we always have room for pastry. So we went to a pasticceria that was across the street, which was equally as wonderful. And then there is not one trip to Florence that's complete without some gelato. La Strega Nocciola is famous for its amazing gelato. This was the favorite part of my itinerary right here is that we had an overnight in Livorno. It gave us plenty of time to go check out the actual city of Livorno before we headed over to the train station. And this time, instead of going into Florence, we decided to head into Pisa. Now, Pisa is a very walkable town. It does have some streets that are a little bit bumpy, but it's not very hilly, which was great. We went over to Palazzo Blu. Now, this museum is really something. It starts off with kind of like a traditional sort of theme, and then it goes into anime. And every room that you walk into, you definitely see something different and interesting. I liked being in the basement and seeing the old pottery. It was really fascinating to see how old some of the pottery was and the condition that it was still in, let alone the drawings themselves. Some of the artwork was definitely on the different side while some was traditional and classic and some way more modern than we expected. It was very reasonable to go in. Because there was four of us, we just did a family coupon which cost a 
about $25. When we finished up going through each of the rooms, we decided at that point we were gonna head over to the Leaning Tower. It was about a 15 to 20 minute walk to get to the Leaning Tower from Palazzo Blue. We headed over the bridge into the square and then we took all of our corny pictures with the Leaning Tower. I hear people say it's overrated, but personally, we absolutely loved it and we had a blast doing all of the silly little pictures. So let's talk about food on board the Escape. Obviously this is one of our favorite topics and the Escape does not disappoint. So you do have plenty of complimentary options. You have your main dining rooms which are Taste, Savor, and the Manhattan Room. Taste and Savor are gonna be a little bit more on the quiet side, and the Manhattan Room usually has a live band, so if you're looking for a little bit of ambiance over there while you're having dinner, perfect place for you to go. You also always have the garden buffet to choose from. That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they have a wide variety of options. I think last night was pot pie night, they had a kofta night, they have Indian food, they have roasted turkey and a whole suckling pig. I mean, you really can't go wrong just hitting up the buffet. It really does have a great amount of options. Then you also have one of our favorites, Oshihan's, which is your 24 hour restaurant. So that's really awesome because it is bar food. You have your wings, you have Caesar salads, you have all kinds of options like pretzel bites, french fries, fish and chips, but it's so great that it's open 24 seven. So especially if you're dealing with like time changes. So if you wanna try something really great, they have this pork dish, it's like a pernil. It's like shredded pork with fried plantains. It is so good, definitely check that one out. And don't skip out on their desserts too because the kids absolutely love all of their desserts on the menu. You can get some ice cream sundaes and um, some banana splits there as well. There is a small upcharge for around $4, but everything else is included. So my favorite venues on the ship are definitely the specialty restaurants. I love the specialty restaurants here. They have everything from teppanyaki to Le Bistro, the French restaurant. You have Cagney Steakhouse and my personal favorite, Food Republic. If you've never been there, I highly suggest checking it out. It's like a Korean Spanish fusion. You have everything from like ramen to pork belly. You have sushi rolls, sashimi. It is so good. Like I cannot recommend it enough. I love that restaurant. You can also check out Bayamo and Ocean Blue and Moderno. Moderno is so cool. It's a Brazilian steakhouse, all you can eat meat. It's really awesome. Love the service there, love the food there. When it comes to specialty restaurants and options, I really can't say enough good things about Norwegian. They're one of our favorite cruise lines because of the options that they give us. We are absolute crazy foodies. We love to try different things and I really feel like we can completely have a culinary experience at every single restaurant that we go to on board. So we went to Rome about a week ahead of time and we spent a few days in Rome itself. We got to see the Vatican and the Pope. We walked all around town. We had some amazing food while we were there from the pastries to the pizzas to the souply. Everything was really fantastic in the city of Rome. We did a ton of walking. We actually walked 11 miles in one day. Still kind of shocking, but also amazing to see the Pantheon, the Fountain of Trevi and of course the Colosseum. We had some amazing food and we stayed at the Holiday Inn Parco de Medici right outside of town. After Rome, we headed by train to Bologna. Now this was about a two and a half hour train ride and we stayed there for a few days as well. We went through the old city and we saw the towers and we took our time inside one of the most beautiful cathedrals. You can walk around everywhere inside and they even show you in the back where the original pieces and the chalices are. Of course, we couldn't go to Bologna without testing out some pasta bolognese and some tortellini and Brodo. Here we stayed at the Best Western Plus. This hotel was really great. Love their breakfast. 
For our post cruise, we decided to take a flight to Polja. Now this was only about $60 a person and the train was about five euros a person in order to get into the city of Bari. We stayed in Bari Centrale, which is just the hub of everything. We were so close to all of the great attractions. We ate amazing food while we were there. Absolutely loved their pizza. And of course you can't go to Bari without getting orecchietti. We did go to Albero Bello, which is a UNESCO site. Now it's extremely hot over there. So definitely go in the morning. You do have to get your bus ticket and kind of like push your way on in order to get in there, but it was well worth seeing. We spent a couple hours walking around Albero Bello before we headed back down into Bari Centrale. It's about a 50 minute ride in each direction. We finished the night off with more orecchietti and pastry and of course some gelato because after all, we are in Italy, so gelato is necessary every night. We also checked out Baravecchia and of course the famous Isle of Orecchietti. We were able to meet Nunzia. She showed us her amazing Orecchietti skills and even posed for a picture. She was super sweet. The next day we headed by train again down to the town of Monopoli. Now Monopoli is a gorgeous town. It's super clean. Lots of great things to see over here. The views are stunning throughout the little city streets and by the waterfront. There happened to be an art show while we were there and then we had some of their amazing local cuisine. The olives were fantastic. The seafood is so fresh and of course Orecchietti again. We loved visiting Monopoli. This was my favorite part of the trip. We took our two and a half hour train ride up to Monte Salvano in Pescara. Hotel Sole was fantastic. Can't recommend them enough. We had a beautiful two bedroom room with the most amazing view of the beach right across the street. And of course, a beautiful pool. We had some arancino, some focaccia, and of course, arrostacini. After all, we're in Abruzzo. Finished the night with some beautiful espresso and got to see my cousin. This place also has a really reasonable lunch menu. The next day we had some more arrostacini and visited with family. It was so nice seeing the whole family. Then we went into the city of Citta Sant'Angelo. This is where my family is from. And again, I know I'm really biased here, but it is just the most beautiful city in Abruzzo. We had a fabulous time. The churches are beautiful. The land itself, everything is so immaculate. We loved meeting a lot of the people as we were walking through town and finding all these beautiful areas. We finished the night over my cousin's house and we got to see all of my cousins, including my 90 year old cousins, Bruno and Olga. For our last day, we took a three hour bus ride to the Fiumicino area. So we were super close to the airport, had some amazing cannoli, sfogliatelli, of course, more gelato. And we had the classics, the beautiful bolognese and carbonara and seafood before we headed home. So we hope you enjoy our recap of our Mediterranean cruise and our pre and post cruise. Any questions, feel free to drop us a line down below. Email me, send us a message, comment, anything. We are happy to answer any questions. So until next time, ciao ragazzi.